Welcome to Fitness Fundamentals Part 1. Let's start with the holistic approach. A holistic approach to fitness includes the seven dimensions of wellness, and we'll talk a little bit about each one of these. So the physical dimension includes the physical body, which would include fitness, nutrition, sleep, and other areas that support a healthy body. Emotional is the ability to express yourself and manage your emotions. Intellectual well, is exploring new concepts and learning new skills. And spiritual, seeking meaning to your life. So in each of these four, we can incorporate these into a fitness class if we're teaching or into our own fitness program. Think about how they relate to yourself or to others. The environmental is the impact we have on the environment and how we take care of it. So if we're working out outside, going for a run, we want to make sure that we're not just tossing away our water bottles on the ground or um, causing stress to the environment. And social is finding connections with others, so spending time with family and friends. And occupational would be incorporating a healthy work-life balance into your workday. So think about how each of these dimensions fit into a fitness program. What kinds of things can you incorporate to address these, either as a fitness leader or within your own fitness program? Let's define active living, exercise, and physical activity. There's a little bit of difference between each of these. So active living is a way to in incorporate physical activity into everyday routines. So it would be walking to the store, biking to work, taking the elevator, maybe playing outside with your kids, taking your dog for a walk. The more we move during the day, the more we decrease our risk of illness. And it also involves physical activity that is fueled by healthy eating and keeping a healthy weight. We want to increase our overall health and sense of well-being, which will enable us to perform our daily tasks. Exercise is training the body to improve its function and enhance fitness. So it is a structured activity specifically planned to develop and maintain physical fitness. And it's more than just being active. It's something we do to achieve, achieve a specific result. So if we're planning on running a marathon, we would want to increase our cardiovascular fitness. Physical activity is defined as moving our bodies enough that it requires energy expenditure. So physical activity includes exercise as well as other activities which improve bodily movement and are done as a part of playing, working, and active transportation, household chores, and recreational activity. Health Canada has designed 24-hour movement guidelines for adults aged 18 to 64. They're, they include moving more, so including moderate to vis vigorous activity, but for the first time the guidelines call out that light physical activity also matters. We want to reduce sedentary time and sleep well. The physical activity guidelines include performing a variety of intensities of physical activity, which includes moderate to vigorous aerobic physical activities to accumulate at least 150 minutes per week, muscle strengthening activities using major muscle groups at least twice a week, and several hours of light physical activities including standing. Sleep, we want to make sure we get seven to nine hours of good quality sleep on a regular basis with consistent bed and wake up times. Sleep plays an important role in our physical health. What motivates people to be active? The level of motivation is different for everyone. One person may just want to tone up and have more energy and another one may be able to maybe want to run 5k or even a marathon. There's intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So the intrinsic would be pride at satisfaction that is being achieved, regardless of what anyone else thinks of one's effort. So you maybe just want to have more energy throughout the day. Feel good about yourself. That would be an intrinsic motivation. And extrinsic is motivation that comes from an outside source. So receiving positive reinforcement, rewards, and payments. So maybe somebody will say, hey, you look great today. That would be an extrinsic motivation. What may be the top reasons or barriers people for people as to why they don't exercise? Here's some barriers for physical activity. Maybe we have no time, we're too busy, lack of motivation, it costs too much, 
we don't have a support system, maybe we don't have daycare, we don't feel fit enough to start, and we don't know where to start. Once people are motivated to change their behavior and become active, they will find ways to overcome these barriers. And we can help pe motivate people to start and stick with their program. Encourage people to set goals, make sure they get enough sleep, learn about how, how their body functions, follow a safe exercise program, cook healthy, well-balanced meals, and find ways to manage stress. Leadership as an instructor. What makes a great fitness leader? What quali qualities do we need? Think of a class that you may have gone to in the past and what you liked about the way the instructor taught the class. Here are some qualities that make a great instructor. They're organized, motivating, knowledgeable, great communication skills. They show that they want to be there. They're flexible in the way they offer the class takes their job seriously in a fun way and gets to know their participants. These are just some tips that help a great instructor. They're passionate and happy about what they're doing, believe in what they're teaching, have empathy, the ability to experience another person's world. Artistic skills. They know how to incorporate creativity, variety, and spice into your classes. Build good rapport with participants, be generous, genuine, and avoid judgment. And we want to portray that we are honest and open. We're going to talk about three leadership styles in being a fitness leader. The best leader are those who use a combination of three leadership styles. As an instructor, you will take different aspects of instructor styles and incorporate them to make your own style. And there is no one style that is best. You will determine the style you use based on the situation. So the three leadership styles are authoritarian. So that would be where the leader is at the front. They're telling you exactly what to do, when to do it, and are very non-flexible in their teaching. The liaison instructor is one that just kind of goes with the flow, asks people what they want to do, and is just very um, fluid in their teaching. And democratic is incorporating the knowledge of the participants making sure that there's lots of options so that they can meet everybody's needs in the class. Good communication is key in being a good instructor. So if you can get to know your participants by name, welcome them as they come into the class, pr practice clear and concise direction throughout your classes, and ask for feedback and see if it's reasonable to incorporate it. We want to be non-judgmental and accept everyone's individuality and practice listening skills. This completes this portion of our course. Stay tuned for the next module where we will learn more about the skeletal and muscular systems.